For thousands of years, man's relationship with food was simple. We looked for it, and when we found it, we ate it. Eventually, we found ways to preserve our food, collecting convenient stashes so we could eat it a little bit later. But that was then. Today, we hunt for convenience as we gather up cartloads of food, some of which can remain intact for months, even years. We feed ourselves while barely lifting a finger. Seems pretty great, but is there a catch? Earlier methods of food preservation included pickling, canning, freezing, and smoking. Then, in the 1800s, there was a seismic shift. Chemistry. Used by manufacturers to improve the look, taste, and shelf life of their goods. But with zero regulation, it wasn't long before high doses of dangerous substances like formaldehyde and borax ended up on our plates and uh, down the hatch. People got sick. So the Food and Drug Administration was created to regulate food safety, including additives. As new products and additives came to market, the FDA's workload increased. They decided that historically safe ingredients should be exempt from testing. The label grass, or generally regarded as safe, was introduced, and the FDA slapped it on everything that was widely deemed harmless. They continued to review new additives, but by the mid-90s, chemical manufacturing was at an all-time high, and the FDA couldn't keep up. So they decided to put the grass approval process in the hands of the manufacturers themselves, replacing regulations with recommendations, which they were not legally required to follow. And why would they? Many of the pesticides, emulsifiers, and plasticizers commonly found in food help keep the cost down and increase the volume and turn bigger profits. In the last two decades, companies have continued to take advantage of these regulatory loopholes, and thousands of unscreened chemicals have been introduced into our food. Next time you're at the supermarket, take a look at some of the product's ingredients, like titanium dioxide, which gives some ranch dressing its signature luster, and is also used to brighten sunscreen, and butylated hydroxytoluene, a chemical that extends the shelf life of some cereals and can be found in jet fuel. So what are all these supposedly food-safe chemicals doing to our bodies? Study after study suggests that processed foods are doing us major damage and robbing us of vital nutrients like vitamins and fiber. They're messing with our gut microbiomes, increasing our hunger hormones, affecting our brains, and upping our risk of cancer. In fact, one recent study showed that eating more ultra-processed food was linked to a 14% higher risk of death. And yet, since processed food is a $422 billion a year business in the US, even a public health crisis might not change things. Sounds bad, right? Yeah, we know. The prevalence of chemicals in our food can feel overwhelming, but becoming more aware is possible. Learn what's actually inside your food, regardless of how things may appear. Take a close look at that ingredient list. If you don't recognize something, look it up. Unsure how or where your food was made? Support companies with transparent farming and manufacturing practices. Small changes like these could have big effects on your health and even bigger effects on the food system. By collectively voting with our wallets, we can influence what's produced and sold which will hopefully lead to fewer unidentified objects appearing in our food, even as our quest for convenience pushes on.